Hi and welcome to Rewire the Mind channel and today I want to talk to you about alcohol triggers. If you're looking to stop or moderate your drinking then you need to be aware of what's triggering your cravings for alcohol. Knowing what makes you feel like you need a drink allows you to put in place a plan of action to change what you'd normally do. So at our clinics, we see similar alcohol triggers appearing time and time again with our clients. So we thought we'd let you know about them. When you understand and know what your triggers are, it goes some way to changing your reactions. Our brains think in milliseconds, which means that once our brain knows that we're around a trigger, it immediately sends you a signal to have a drink. We want to help slow down that process so that when you walk into situations, you have a conscious awareness of your triggers and that will allow you to put in place a different plan of action. So what triggers you to drink? Everyone may have different situations that trigger their cravings for alcohol, but many of them have similarities, which is why it's useful for you to know what some of these popular drinking triggers are. Whilst all the situations might not apply to you, it's important to note down your particular alcohol triggers so you can think about ways of changing the way you think the next time you face a sort of familiar or similar situation, person, or location. So let's dive in and look at what some of these popular issues are. Okay, let's look at one of the first ones. When your children are in bed. Okay, so not all of you are going to have children. If that's the case, just wait until uh, we get on to the next trigger. But for those of you that do have, you think about how you might crave time for yourself in the evening and are counting down the hours until your little ones have gone to bed so you can get some peace and quiet. Raising children isn't easy and it can be especially hard if they decided to play up during the day. So many people will pick up a glass of wine or a bottle of beer when they're no longer around and have gone to bed as a way of rewarding themselves for getting through another hard day. The only problem is, is the reward isn't usually just one drink. So you need to find alternative methods of rewarding yourself so that the key alcohol trigger isn't activated. The next one is on your way home from work. There are a certain number of our clients who regularly stop on their way home from work in order to get a drink. Usually they have a regular bar or a pub that they pass on their journey home and they can't resist going in and having a few drinks while catching up with the regular staff or their friends. Alternatively, it may be just a stop off at an off license or a supermarket to get that alcohol. An occasional drink is fine, but many of our clients would spend hours in there every evening and we've got to ask why. Perhaps these people were lonely and that was a way of them getting company from others. Or alternatively, a large portion of those clients we've suddenly realised had problems with their partner. But rather than talk to their partner, they did try and avoid the conversation and spend the night drinking to forget about the problem. If this is you, then you need to understand your drivers and address the actual issue rather than trying to avoid it because it doesn't help. The next is your partner being your trigger. Many of our clients find that it's actually their partner that acts as the person who persuades them or triggers their need to have alcohol. Perhaps they both sit side by side in the evening and one asks the other if they want a drink. And so automatically they do exactly what their partner is doing, partly due to habit and also just a fear of missing out on some kind of fun. If you've got into this cozy routine with your partner that centers around drinking or being drunk in the evening, then you need to mix things up and start to do things differently. You also might have to separate, not from your husband particularly, but separate your uh, common goals. Your partner may continue drinking, you can't force them to stop. So you're gonna have to find ways of getting out of the routine that you have with your partner and doing other things so your trigger isn't activated. Drinking to try and resolve stress is the number one issue that we see in our clinics. Whether our clients have had a bad day at work or they're stressed trying to get the kids doing their homework, it's the number one reason why our clients turn to alcohol in the evening. At some point, they learned that they could use drink in order to relax or as a coping mechanism. 
and their mind felt like it gave them something to take away those horrible feelings of feeling on edge or unstressed. So the next time a stressful situation occurred, they did the same thing. And before they know it, they trained themselves to use alcohol every time that stress returned. The only issue is that stress isn't really improved because of the alcohol. All alcohol does is make you forget about it for an hour or so. The stress is still there when you wake up and you'll probably have a hangover the next morning as well. The key to managing your drinking triggers in this case is to find stress management techniques to actually lower the stress in the first place. Once your levels are lower, you have less need to drink. So that could be things like time management. It could be, uh, as we use with our clients, self-hypnosis for relaxation to help you switch off. Whatever it is, you need to address what's causing the stress in your life and find ways to mitigate it. Now, whilst we're on the subject of drinking with your partners, how many of you drink before you have sex and can't imagine being in bed with someone sober? There are a number of reasons why people might do this and why this problem triggers an alcohol need. Perhaps you have confidence issues and when you drink, they tend to fade away a little bit so you're less conscious of your body and your thoughts. Alternatively, perhaps your partner is no longer someone who's that attractive to you and this is a way of not having to think about it. Or even you might find that alcohol is the only way that you seem to get aroused at the moment. Again, you need to understand your problem and tackle the underlying cause. As an example, confidence doesn't come from a bottle, it comes from your mind and within. So confidence coaching or training to boost your self-esteem and uh, help you feel more confident about yourself is gonna help you more than drinking will. And talking of confidence, well, that is our next trigger. Confidence issues can make our clients drink too much, particularly when they're faced with social situations. Many of them will have learned in their teenage years to drink as a way of feeling more confident in front of their friends or in bars. So as time's gone on, they've stuck with that habit and they doubt whether they can actually enter a social occasion without having something to drink first. And as I've said earlier, the reality is alcohol doesn't make you more confident, but it does lower your inhibitions. Many of our clients will be using alcohol to avoid embarrassing themselves or stop worried about being judged, social phobia issues. What they don't realize is that by being drunk, they only draw attention to themselves rather than making themselves blend in. Again, going back to confidence coaching or therapy to deal with that is going to have a vast impact and will drastically cut down your need to have alcohol when you're out. Emotional drinking is another big trigger. Alcohol triggers often involve emotions, but most people aren't even aware that it's happening. Many of our clients are carrying around a significant amount of emotional baggage and most of it's been unresolved. For many, this has been with them for years and they don't even necessarily realize it's there. And emotions can rule their life, such as sadness or guilt, anger, anxiety, frustration. Alcohol becomes a way of coping with those internal emotions. And we know, for example, that some of our clients use alcohol as a way of dampening, for example, their anxiety levels. They find that the day after drinking, however, they suffer from anxiety, as we call it, and feel even worse. You need to get help to resolve the underlying emotions and that will help you reduce your drinking. So when we do our drink less programs, we always try and look at the bigger picture and try and find the root cause of our client's problems rather than just addressing the drinking alone because it won't be enough to resolve it. Also, never underestimate the power of habit when it comes to your alcohol triggers. We are creatures of habit and many of us love to do the same things at the same day, day after day in the same location and we makes us feel safe or it makes us feel comfortable. That means if you come home in the evening, you take off your coat, head straight to the fridge to grab a glass of wine and then repeat that again and again, you've created an incredibly powerful habit. 
So imagine the day that you decide that you want to come home and not have a drink, every fiber of your being is screaming for that glass or that bottle of alcohol that you would normally drink. This is a psychological addiction, not a physical one. Your mind just wants to repeat the action that it's been used to. And this can be remedied by doing other activities to break the pattern. We certainly help our clients in our drink less programs to find ways to alter the habit so that the drinking trigger doesn't automatically happen. The next alcohol trigger is sleep and this is often linked with the stress trigger as well. A significant number of our clients have a problem with their sleep. They have a real worry or fear that they're not going to get enough sleep and that keeps them awake at night. So they use alcohol as a way of quieting their minds so that they just fall into that deep sleep. And once they've realized that this works once or twice, they then repeat the same behaviors again and again. The problem is alcohol doesn't necessarily do what you want it to do. In fact, alcohol often gives you a significantly lower quality of sleep, meaning that you wake up the following day feeling worse than you did the day before. Dealing with our clients' sleeping patterns is important because it helps to change the alcohol triggers. When we show that it's possible to get some sleep without drinking, the need to self-medicate disappears. Getting a good night's sleep isn't difficult when you know how. And we give our clients a guided meditation for sleep as a way of getting them uh, into that nice quiet zone. They just need to press play and relax. You can find that in the shop on our website if you want to try it as a self-help method for yourself. And our final problem for today, the last trigger, is drinking when you have a chronic illness. We're on the subject of self-medication. And in this case, we're not talking about short-term illnesses that make you feel nauseous or put you out of action for a couple of days, but longer-term chronic illnesses or disabilities that make people feel uh, bad or in pain. So, for example, a client in chronic pain may use alcohol as a way of helping them deal with flare-ups. The alcohol helps them to numb the pain and makes them forget about their lack of mobility or inability to lead uh, a normal life. We have seen clients that have been drinking too much after recovering from cancer, strokes, or who are using it as a coping mechanism to deal with long-term conditions such as MS or fibromyalgia. Again, addressing the psychological elements to help these drinking patterns is important as they create the positive change and that can alter the habit or behavior. Alcohol triggers can be addressed by identifying the problem areas and then putting in a place a strategy for you to deal with those situations. When you have a plan of action and set an intention, it becomes much easier to create that change. If you head on over to our website, rewirethemind.com, we have plenty of articles on how to deal with alcohol cravings and to how to stop drinking so much. We also have alcohol reduction printables, as we spoke about earlier, the self-hypnosis downloads, and we have our Drink Less program if you want to deal with a therapist one-to-one. 